Hello and welcome to Desktop Dungeons Rewind. I was always planning to do something and I think I just want to do a series honestly. I've always wanted to do a series on the original Desktop Dungeons and this seems like a good enough excuse to just do that. Um, the uh, the developers or the publisher behind uh, Desktop Dungeon has basically given away for free. They gave it for free to anyone who owned the original Desktop Dungeons and then they gave the original Desktop Dungeons away. Um, so curious moves, I, I have to respect it. It's, it's an interesting one, but basically desktop dungeons rewind is free to play free to keep if you want it to be. Um, and there are, uh, little kind of DLC packages that don't actually have any content, but they are a way to support the developer. So, um, based on my previous experience and fun, uh, with desktop dungeons, I would recommend checking it out. And I would also recommend, um, even if you're not a huge fan shipping something towards the developer, they have like very small varying um, like kind of increments of, of how much you can ship towards them. And, and they, they seem like really good uh, lads and I, I appreciate what they're trying to do here. So uh, without further ado, this is my Desktop Dungeons series. Let's see how far I get because this game can get brutally difficult. And we'll call our uh, kingdom Big uh, Bim uh, Big Simpia. There you go. <laughs> That's good. Love it. The story begins. Creatures attacked in the night. The caravan was unprepared. Travelers had been warned about the unexplored realms, but pride often plays tricks on reason. Fight back. Flames and death engulfed the defenders, nomads, exiles, and vagabonds with only a handful of real fighters among them. Injured, ill-trained, and separated from one another, many of the survivors had no choice but to press on into a nearby network of maze-like caverns. Watch your step. So this is, uh, if you're not, if, if you don't know what this is, it's a, basically it's a traditional roguelike, but it's an unconventional one, so it's not a super traditional traditional roguelike. Uh, but uh, we have a basically one screen dungeon um, although there are multiple screens generally there are a couple of like uh, undergrounds and and so there is a there is a couple of screens but for the most part it's a very simplistic dungeon um, we're gonna be uncovering the map and uh, we're going to be killing monsters and we need to kill the monsters in a specific order in order to kill the boss the boss uh, tends to be something very difficult to overcome and uh, we're, we're going to try to be becoming stronger over time now as I reveal these spaces I am going to be gaining health so I can re reveal a couple spaces and uh, that'll heal me um, I believe the new gimmick for Desktop Dungeons Rewind is I can undo things, but I don't think you can undo things if you've gained a new ex uh, new knowledge. I'm not sure. We'll figure that thing out together. But anyway, we're going to uh, click on the goblin. Nice uh, um, kind of transparency of information. You can see at the top how much health on the left side I'm going to lose by clicking on the goblin and how much health the goblin is going to lose. So with this information, I can tell, and you know, this is the point, of course, is that if I click on the goblin twice, it will kill the goblin, and then I will still be alive. And that's the important part. So we've killed the goblin, and we've gained a little bit of XP. We can move diagonally. This is the game telling us that we can move diagonally, as is the, uh, you know, uh, that there's the traditional roguelike part. No, that's that's not true. Um, can I move the, the screen though? I didn't mean to move me. I was kind of hoping to pan. Oh, okay, right click to pan. There we go. All right, so we're gonna kill another goblin. There we go. What is that? It's just a little bit of environment. This is telling us, of course, that there's a creature over there and that it is a level one creature, which is what we want. We want level one creatures. That was an undead. He had undead traits. Um, different creatures have different traits, and that is going to come, become very, very important later. We have a meat man. I'm pretty sure in the original desktop dungeons, this was actually Super Meat Boy. I, I'm not sure, but I do re recall that Super Meat Boy was in the original desktop dungeons. So this uh, this zombie, I think we can right-click it, and we can check out these traits. This thing is undead. It cannot be poisoned physically. 
This enemy has no blood. It will not leave a blood pool. I'm not sure what the blood pool is, but um, there are different races in this game that you can play as, including, I believe, vampires. So, um, you know, that's... There's there's a lot. It, like, I cannot understate, under, honestly, uh, how much stuff is in desktop dungeons this okay this guy's got first strike so this guy will attack first that matters so if if for instance on that second strike we're gonna we're gonna kill them but if on that second strike we were gonna die we would die right we t i think we tend to get first strike although eh, it might be that first strike for monsters supersedes our first strike we'll, we'll get to that there's there's a bit of nuance that we don't need to necessarily uh get into yet what is this this is a spell burns your enemies for four points of magical damage per character level that is obviously very important i believe just about anyone can have a spell so these guys are goo blobs and they physical resist 90 percent so you know this is kind of our tutorial um it's not super tutorializing and that's actually a good thing i think uh now you might notice that we don't have enough mana uh we have five mana and it costs six to do burn day rays so we want to reveal some more of the map so we get some more mana and then we can kill or, or cast it on this goo goo man and now when we reveal more map we get more mana we have a health potion. The health potion matters. And, th and this is like, this is where I think that, um, you know, I think that this game is a traditional roguelike for the most part. But I think that a lot of people that come in uh, expecting a very traditional, traditional roguelike um, are going to be, I wouldn't say disappointed, but maybe uh, surprised to find that this game is more of a puzzle than anything. Because the thing is, is that, you know, in traditional kind of RPG roguelikes, um, there is this expectation that your resources are there when you need them right like you you do a little battle and then you rest and then you you know take some, take your health potion and your mana potion like maybe when you need them in desktop dungeons these are here for you to complete the dungeon like you really need to use them uh in a in a very methodical way like um if i could for instance kill this zombie here like, let's look at this zombie, right? It's going to take four strikes to kill the zombie. However, the zombie is going to kill me in two strikes. Okay, not not great. However, if I was to strike the zombie once, take a health potion, then that would mean I would be able to strike the zombie a third time without, you know, fear of death. Uh, that's not really going to do it for us right now, but it's good to know these things, right? Like, that's that's where potions come in handy. A sensory stone that seems completely inert at first, but yields great rewards after a conversion process. Okay. Oh. Hmm. So, what do we do here? We can... Convert it. Seems completely inert at first, but yields great rewards after a conversion process. High conversion value. So, it would give us 150 somethings. Um, I can't remember what the some things are for at all. I, I don't know what I'm doing with that, actually. Let's just continue and kill some stuff. This is a warlock. Now, see, the warlock is going to take three strikes. So in this instance, it would actually be very highly valuable to... Um... It says to plus 10% bonus. Maybe that's when we get a full conversion rate. These warlocks are, are kind of um, a pain. So we're going to avoid them for now. There's a lot of them. We have a goblin. This guy's level four now. In this game, you definitely want to um, like kind of attack upwards. Good goat. This is our boss. Oh, you know, we do have um, our spells, so we could probably kill a few goblins that way, but um, or, or, or warlocks. But let's see here. If we do this, then that means there's two strikes left. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not actually going to do it. So we might want to just use um, this on our on a warlock. That's still not going to do it. Uh, this is uh, this is tricky. 
We do have a zombie over here. Could we do this on the zombie? Unfortunately, this takes six mana to, to cast. It would, it would ca cast uh, put burning on them. The thing about burning is that it's going to do some damage to them every turn. And then we can make turns pass by by um, revealing the map. Now, I'm not doing necessarily a good thing right now. You only have like your your map is kind of a finite resource. And so by revealing it too aggressively, you lose that, that's that's potential healing that you're going to lose, right? Um, now I don't really see or, uh, anything. Let's, uh, let's put burn, burn to raise on the zombie for now. And then I'm going to reveal a small bit of map and then they have burning for, I think one more turn, but we're going to put burning on them again. And then we're going to reveal some more map. Now the creatures actually heal as well when I reveal map. So worth noting. Also worth noting that I can't reveal enough map to get that spell back with without the zombie healing as well so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna hit them once um now they would kill me right but i want to what i want to do is reveal some map and then just try and like wear them down this way now i could kill them if i use my uh health potion or i could try and just like reveal enough to get uh, one more one more spell, I don't think that's gonna work actually. Oh, what is this? Pendant of health. This item glows slightly red when worn, offering a bonus of ten maximum health points. Well, that would have been good. Um, we're still gonna die if we do one more one more attack. But I, I really what I want to do is try and get enough for a spell. Uh, I think that. This, this does four points of damage, so um, we're, we're in a bad threshold right now. All right, we've got... Oh, Pendant of Mana. This is good. Still not enough to cast a spell. What I'm going to try and do is... I think if I cast this one more time... Yeah, now we can finally kill them. So monsters do seem to have first strike by default, but we can get first strike and then we'll do first strike to creatures as long as they don't have first strike. I believe that is how it works. So we're just going to heal up. We've got a lot more resources now. We can convert these pendants. I believe this conversion here is actually uh, towards a level. Like if we can get a full conversion, that would mean that we would level up. Now we can see, uh, I'm pretty sure we can kill this lad, but what we want, we always want to cast this first because it does burning and then that means they're taking damage while we're hitting them. Well, we also do damage, of course. And we did level up, so we're level four now. We should be able to kill some warlocks. So we can kill warlocks now. Let's hit them and then we'll reveal a little bit of map to heal up and then we'll do much the same. And then reveal some more map. And I mean, here's a here's where things get kind of tricky. Is actually killing creatures might not be the answer because if you can't level up, like if you don't have enough, if there are not cr enough creatures on the board to level up, then there's no point. Actually, no point in killing creatures. Um, so you, you know, the goal ultimately is you want to kill the goat. This is the goat. This is the boss of our current floor. Um, I'm pretty sure I could kill them, right? Because here's the thing. Uh, it'll take me three strikes to attack them, but then we also can cast our spell twice. And we can also heal once. They can kill me in two hits, but I think that there's... There's a potential there to kill them. Um, let's kill this goblin. So we're very close to leveling up. I think once we level up once more, then uh, we'll be strong enough to kill that uh, goat. 
There we go. We leveled up. Level ups are also a mechanic that you want to make the most of because they actually fully heal you when you when you level up. So you actually like, like might want to fight as close to death as possible in some circumstances in order to make the most of that level up. All right, so we're going to cast our fireball on them and then we're going to hit them and we can cast fireball again and kill them. And that was easy. It's never going to be that easy again. This trophy is what you came here for. Grab it and go. I don't know how to grab it. Oh, I see. Uh, that's if I if I hit exit, then I'll leave. But what is over here? It's telling me to go over here. Oh, money. This is uh, the game's way of telling me maybe, um, you know, maybe explore the map. Uh, gold is going to become very good very important um later on now uh this desktop dungeons does have meta progression but i think it's in gonna gonna be uh, appear to some people as being very unkind meta progression <laughs> um which i'm cool with i'm making it through your first dungeon in case you're still uncertain about some things we'd like to offer you the guided tutorial before playing plunging you into the full game experience otherwise feel free to move on onward I appreciate the the unguided tutorial. That was that was good. I love this artwork actually. I was kind of admiring it in the trailer. Like there's some some real nice line work going on here. Many perished in the days and weeks following the attack. Some were slaughtered by cave denizens. Others became trapped or lost. Stronger survivors prevailed against the darkness, frantically building what shelter they could. If this fledgling settlement is to survive beyond its first few weeks, its people will need a reliable and well-trained force of heroes to keep enemies at bay. This is where your job become, uh, begins. I'm no hero. Clearly, but as the de facto administrator of this rabble, do you pledge to expand the settlement and recruit the heroes needed to defend your people? Are there perks? Most honorable administrator, I've been elected by the good people of the settlement to tell you what to do in order to tell everyone else what to do. You may consider me as your uh, as an advisor, advisor of sorts. Uh, finger crossbows is, is always going to be the best answer. You're too kind. Your new position gives you the responsibility over our collected funds and efforts. This represents the resources we've managed to scrounge together so far. Is that all? Your current task is ensuring our survival, so I recommend investing our limited funds in training and arming some real defenders. Upgrade the structure by clicking on the helpfully labeled button here. This will allow us to start recruiting our first available hero type, the fighter. Remember this moment well, for you have just taken your first tentative steps down a long and glorious path. Under your guidance, these survivors will build a kingdom to challenge the gods themselves. Too early for a statue? Admirable, admirable humble clicking and spending, noble administrator. You've just unlocked the fighter class. These hardy warriors are superior to common guards in several ways. They excel at hunting down opponents and gaining experience quickly. Good. Now, when I say the meta progression is unkind in this game, what I really mean is that it doesn't really give you an advantage. If anything, it gives you a disadvantage. It's unlocking complexity in many ways. And it's also, I think in some, like the game gets harder and more com complicated, like it, uh, um, kind of uh, reveals new classes, new races, new lots of things and new combinations of everything. And also items like you, you really have to gear up your um, heroes and I think um, in some ways there it's kind of a rock paper scissors thing you you have to kind of try and figure out the, the right combo of race and class against certain dungeons against certain monsters I could be wrong about that but uh, you know it's the meta progression is more like unlocking complexity and in some ways that means it's making the game more difficult um, but uh, it, it's still really fun and I really appreciate it because it adds a lot of uh, replay -a ability and um it makes the game a bit more interesting you know so we've got our fighter our scouts have discovered some monster layers in the surrounding area it is time to take the fight to them let's have our heroes earn their keep they can return when they have some monsters heads or some other souvenirs of victory bring the loot well that sounds like an interesting prospect oh sorry for butting in we'll chat later who was that 
Are you ready to send someone on their next adventure? Just select a dungeon and we'll go we'll get to filling out your hero's permit form. So there's Thousand Cuts, Badlands, and Vince's Vault. Let's do Thousand Cuts. Bosses, Sir Digby. Um, great, just confirm your selection here. So is there, here's our screen of kin in class. Um, I guess they've gone for kin over race. That might be a good decision. There's quite a lot of different um, races in this game, and there's definitely a lot of classes, and they all will have very different play styles, as I recall. Um, so we're selecting the only two uh, you know, combination we have, which is human and fighter. Humans do have their own play style, which I kind of appreciate. They're not just like the normal or vanilla class. They get a 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion points. So I guess the conversion isn't just for a level up. It'll actually give you a, a bonus. Instincts. Can sense fighters, uh, enemies further away in the fog. So that's why I was able to... Um, oh, maybe not. Uh, that's that's how I can see those enemies in, in the fog like that. So we've got a, a post here. You're playing as a human fighter. Human Humans get a 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion points. This class has the following abilities. Instincts. Can sense enemies further away in the fog. Gains XP when attacked by higher level enemies. And less XP needed per level. Dungeon runs start with level 1 of standard death protection on the character. So that means, um, yeah, so I get one save. And that can be used to, uh, I can exploit that for a free level. Like I could go and, uh, you know, fight a level 2 like right now maybe. Power-ups like these only improve maximum stats and have few short-term benefits, so pick them up as soon as possible. I, I notice it's guiding me somewhat. Um, so we got a bit of extra uh, health. Now, it would take three hits to kill this warlock. And I think it would actually potentially kill us. We could use a health potion, right? So we could hit them. Oh, I guess that next hit is actually going to be our... Um, death save you can see on the left the death protection is getting wiped out so let's go ahead and use a health potion that's still going to use it so we'll use another health potion and we're still going to end up using the death protection but i'm going to do this it's not a terrible idea to do this because um you know we gain extra xp even you know as the fighter but also just like normally <laughs> um from attacking or killing things a higher level than us so it's a good idea to, to try and do that because uh, higher level creatures are also a finite resource if you think about it. Because uh, once you know once they're dead, once we're high enough level, those are no longer available to us. Uncovers three random dungeon tiles with normal regeneration benefits. Um, so we could take the spell and actually we could convert it. I'm gonna convert it so we get extra. We have a we have more attack power now. Swaps places with an enemy at, uh, at adding slow debuff. No blink, retreat, or retaliation. Strike second. So this is a better spell. Um, I like the revealing one, but I think it's, um, you know, better for us to get that attack bonus if we can. So now we can just, like, we can just kill some creatures. It's uh, no, no biggie. We seem to have first strike right now for certain. Maybe the, maybe the warlocks are just like that. Get that attack bonus. Oh, we've got another uh, wait what? So since we got another wait what, we can actually just convert this for free. Free extra attack power. So things are going very well right now. We leveled up. Dungeon hint writer got, uh, guild memo number one. When fighting monsters, pay attention to your and their health. Whoever runs out first dies. No red, you're dead. Killed. Uh, so we have here our first staircase down. We can check that out. These are little bonus um, things. They, oh, I, I notice there's a dude over there. Can we swap places with them? So maybe in this instance, this is where you would want to have that spell that would reveal tiles. Um, so, you know, maybe a bit... Uh, I was a bit like premature and converting it that's fine there's one creature over there so there could be some extra fun secrets for sure might might have been interesting but it's not the end of the world that we don't we don't get it you know and we have burned arrays 
I like Burned Rays. It's one of my favorite spells. It's a very basic one. I think we have our boss here, Foul Nemesis. It appears as though you have discovered my base of operations. I cannot suffer your presence and allow you to live. Regards, Sir Digby the Goat, who is totally a boss character. Sir, this is a Denny's. So now um, it's going to take eight strikes to kill Sir Digby. That's a lot of strikes, I won't lie. But we have options. I could try spending resources to make this happen, but we're only level three right now. We don't have to do this yet. We've got Warlock's kill. Now, what I'm going to do with this Warlock is I'm going to do what I would do to the goat. I'm going to hit him with a, a spell. Um, I was hoping to hit him with the other spell as well. What I want to do is hit them with this wait what. And that um, makes it so that they uh, they're slowed. And I believe that means we have first strike on them. So let's um, let's hit them. Now we I think we do have first strike, but the thing is, is that they know like that it's worn off, right? We we could have done that for our finishing move, but if we do it again, so now they're slowed, and now we will kill them since we have first strike on them. Um, it's gonna take a little while for me to play like truly optimally in this game, and I may never do so very well. Uh, I'm I, you know. This is the kind of gameplay I'm, I'm not great at. Why did we level up there? That was curious. Well, we can do wait what on them and then... Uh, oh, they, they managed to heal. Since I revealed some tiles, they healed exactly enough. Okay, well, that didn't that didn't go exactly the, one, the way one would hope. But we're fine. We're, we're at level four now. Okay, so we can kill the zombie without much to fear. So we're at level, we're at, we have 11, uh, 11 experience points, so we can kill this zombie. We're at 15 experience, things are going well. We should be able to level up one more time for sure. Sometimes it's a genuine fear. Like sometimes you just like, oh, I don't have enough, you know? Okay, so here we go. We have this uh, uncovers three random dungeon tiles. So let's pick that up. We'll go down here. We're going to use it. And I think the the hope is that we um, reveal the tile that the creature is on. And then we can swap places with them, I think. There is a bunch of stuff there that we want. Yeah, there we go. So now we can swap places with them and we can get this uh, uh, extra stuff. It's a good thing there was another um, reveal tiles uh, spell. Lots, lots and lots of, of stuff there. So now we'll swap again and then we leave. We got all of our good stuff. So we're at level five. We might be able to kill the goat now. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna convert this again, even though it was helpful. It was helpful, but, uh, we don't need it anymore. So it is definitely a good idea, like, you know, maybe before you fighting the boss to reveal the whole map. Um, or maybe actually after fighting the boss. So we're at, you might notice we're at, um, 6 XP. These guys give us four each if they're level three. And there's only one level three dude left. So that tells me that there's not enough creatures to level up. So that means we have to consider fighting the boss. Um, now this wait, what is actually like, we'll gain 10 experience by converting it, or sorry, 10 uh, attack power. But if we use it just before we kill Sir Digby and then convert it, we can actually get our cake and eat it too. We can get that first strike and then also the plus 10% uh, fighting power. But um, we need 14 mana in total to in order to cast both burned rays and uh, wait what. I actually think it would be worth converting burned rays. Because the thing is, is it does four damage and then like one burning per turn. I think it's like, I don't think it's worth like using it and then trying to recover enough mana to use wait what um because i, I think they're going to recover more health and that's actually worth it 
for us. I don't know. It, it, like if one did the math, I'm sure it would be a, a bit better. But uh, I, I, I have not. I guess I also had mana. Oh, that's a good point. As I should have just like used mana potions with <laughs> with the burned arrays. Oops. Dumb move. Okay, well, it's a good thing we learn these things now. Either way, we're going to kill uh, the goat because we have two health potions and, you know, we can use... We can do what I was doing, what I was talking about, convert it and then kill. Yay. So now we can leave. Uh, I wouldn't mind checking out the rest of the dungeon. There's actually no reason to kill, like, the rest of the... Oh, we have another burn to raise here. That's really funny. There's, there's like... Outside of gold, there isn't much reason to wander around. Casting fireball means a free attack. Use it as often as possible, even if you're a fighter. They don't hit back. Okay. We got our horn, and now we're leaving. I think I am going to leave. Like, I'll do a little bit of town management, but I think I want to keep these episodes fairly short because it is a you know pretty casual game. It's This is not a Last of Us. It gets complicated, and it does get pretty difficult, but... It's not complicated in a like very, um, you know, epic or like dramatic way. It's it's tricky. It's a puzzle game, you know, like kind of like a very difficult bejeweled. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to keep these episodes pretty brief and, and breezy. Victory, your hero parades through the muddy streets of your rapidly growing settlement. Goat horn clasped in one mailed fist. Rose petals and jubilant shouts alike fill the air as townsfolk come out to celebrate. Amidst the glee, a lone figure approaches you as you recline in your administrator's parade viewing chair. New throne? Who dares? Hi there. I can't help but notice you. the sheer amount of fun that you're all having with that chunko monster skull. I happen to have a business proposal related to that. I'm listening. This may seem rather forward, but I was once a renowned taxidermist in the surrounding realms, and I know a lot of very rich buyers who would love a mounted beastie head of some kind hanging over their fireplace. Bragging rights, you see. Why do I care? Uh, long story short, I'd like to buy that trophy from you. I have the gold right here. How much gold? This new kingdom needs some kind of regular income, right? Well, what, work with me and we can build an entire economy around the haunting, the hunting and slaying evil. I'm sure that this will turn into a long and mutually profitable relationship. Just keep the gold coming. Trophy sold. So you, um, you know, you get gold for your prize but also it, that tells you how many different uh, creature bosses there are there's more than one way to slay the average dungeon monstrosity and the kingdom's population is one of diverse talents and interests magic users holy men and even common uh, cut purses are uh, are interested in fighting the good fight especially if there's money involved how do we recruit them monster trophies are a valuable resource of income uh let's put that money to use by building ourselves a second guild our options are upgrading the structure will give you priests the reliable, uh, reliable slayers of the undead with impressive health buffs. Holy folk. Upgrading the structure will give you wizards. They fight. Uh, start off with a free fireball, lower mana costs, and other abilities make their glyph so much easier. Nice hats, too. Upgrading the structure will give you thieves. They excel at squeezing extra value out of dungeon resources and deal a little extra damage to unsuspecting opponents. Hide the silver. Um... I like wizards, but I'm not good with them. It's a, a, it's a, you know, difficult arrangement. I kind of like the holy men. They're, uh, they're easy. Not easy, but they're, like, simple for me to get, wrap my head around. So let's do holy men or priests. Guild expansion. City expansion. Our brave new kingdom is still in grave peril. The denizens of nearby d uh, dungeons are breathing down our necks. It's brave hero... Brave hero wanders in and slays the leaders in which in each area the rest should be demoralized enough to scatter. Most autonomous and independently thinking administrator. <laughs> I believe you've learned enough to start performing kingdom duties in whichever way you uh, see most fit. I'd like, uh, I'll, I'll still be on hand to advise you when new matters come up, but from here on, you may consider your decisions and opportunities somewhat more open. Have fun. I've got it from, uh, finger crossbows. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it. Um, I, I I recommend this game. You know, I, I like I already I, I covered it. I had some qualms about the art style for um, Rewind. I think that um, 
it's i don't think it's an improvement over the original game in some ways and i feel like the mechanics are almost exactly the same i didn't really voice those too much here because it doesn't matter it's desktop dungeons and i like desktop dungeons a lot and i i want to support the devs if i can possibly and spread this game as much as i can it's a it's a good game um and uh i'm going to enjoy it and i'm going to do a series and i'm i hope that you will enjoy that and if you did please uh, maybe support me by hitting the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this if you happen to be new to my channel and i'll see you guys next time for some more of this take it easy